Hello friends. Today's topic of discussion is removal of microbial cells and other solid matters that is by foam separation and precipitation. There are various stages of recovery and purification of an extracellular product. The first stage for the downstream processing is the removal of large solid particles and microbial cells. It can be done by a number of processes like by centrifugation, filtration, sedimentation, precipitation, flocculation, electroprecipitation, etc. Centrifugation is widely adopted technique for this purpose but requires large energy input per unit mass of cells separated. So many of our efforts have been made to develop energy saving separation methods. During filtration, the use of filter aids is necessary to improve filtration rates because many microbial cells are very minute. Sedimentation employs surface active agents to obtain separation. To improve sedimentation rates in centrifugation, heat and flocculation treatments are employed. However, the surfactants reduce the metabolic activities of the cells, so separated cells cannot be reused. Therefore, such methods can be used in operations where the reuse of the cells is not required, such as sewage treatment. The methods of microbial cell separation have been accomplished for many years. Borden et al. in 1987 examined the use of electrophoresis and dielectrophoresis to exploit the charged properties of microbial cells as well as ultrasonic treatment to improve flocculation characteristics and magnetic separations. The problems associated with all these techniques include high cost and scale up difficulties. Solution of this problem is the use of two phase liquid extraction. Here we need to discuss in detail foam separation. This is well known method of separation of components of a solution which is based on the differences in their surface activities. It is particularly suitable as foams are having large interfacial area per unit volume of the liquid. It allows separation of whole cells or molecules such as protein or colloidal. Materials first selectively adsorbed to the surface of gas bubbles rising through a liquid and then be concentrated and finally removed by skimming. This is the schematic flow diagram for foam separation where by sparger liquid is continuously mixed and foam get produced. Whenever it get overflow, it will be collected in another container where it will be broken and collapsed foam will be collected in another vessel. By the use of surface active agents such as long chain fatty acids, amines and quaternary ammonium compounds, surface activity of some materials can be improved. Materials made surface active and concentrated are termed Coligans, whereas the surface active agents used are termed collectors. During foam separation, some parameters should be checked such as pH, air flow rates, surfactants and coligand collector ratio. Rubin et al. in 1966 separated 90% of the E. coli cells in 1 minute and 99% in 10 minutes by foam separation using lauric acid, steril amine or t octyl amine as surfactants. This method also proved effective with other organisms like chlorella species and chlamydomonas species. Greaves and Wang in 1966 have used ethyl hexadecyl dimethyl ammonium bromide for E. coli enrichment. Another technique which we need to discuss in detail is precipitation. Precipitation is the chemical process in which solid gets formed in a solution or inside another solid. The solid formed in a solution is called the precipitate and the liquid remaining above the solid is called the supernatant. Precipitation may be carried out at various stages of the product recovery process. This is the simplest method for isolation of fermentation products. 
to allow enrichment and concentration of desired product in one step precipitation is used therefore it reduces the volume of material for further processing there are number of agents which are used in precipitation here i have given some examples first acids and bases they are used to change ph of a solution until isoelectric point of the compound is achieved at that ph molecules precipitate due to decrease in the solubility second salts such as ammonium and sodium sulfates they are used for the precipitation of specifically proteins the salt removes water from the surface of the protein and allows the exposure of the non polar sites by that facilitate the aggregation and precipitation organic solvents for example proteins can be precipitated out of a broth by the addition of chilled ethanol and acetone methanol can be used in the precipitation of dextrin some non ionic polymers such as polyethylene glycol can also be used to precipitate proteins next poly electrolytes they can be used in the precipitation of a range of compounds protein binding dyes Proteins can precipitate by some protein binding dyes like triazine dyes which precipitate various classes of protein and last is affinity precipitation it is a new method in which select it will allow selective precipitation of compounds thank you we'll welcome your questions and feedback please visit us at our website www.elearnmicrobiology.com